so I have been keeping pretty quiet about this Ukraine Russia ordeal. Um, there's reasons for that. Uh, first is you got to take in everything with a grain of salt. You can't just rush to judgment and bandwagon and cheerlead. Uh, it's the false flag waving initiative that America and the Western con white countries are really good at uh, being kind of provocative and trying to provoke and invoke feelings of uh, unity and patriotism and world-class patriotism at that, uh, where you can do anything if you just stick together and you all march to the same drumbeat. You're all feeling some sort of uh, outrage at what is going on and you don't have a critical bone in your body to be able to take a step back and rationalize and reason and have the ability to discern and come up with exactly what you feel. You just hear, oh, those people, are, bad things are happening over there. We need to act. Uh, and I feel like for way, way too long, America is trying to be uh, the global police. We spend more on our military than the top nine countries combined. And we are not the global police. That's not our role. Uh, all countries should be considered sovereign, which means they govern themselves. They don't answer to anybody. That they are their own country, and as long as they stay within their own borders, so you don't really have to answer to anybody. But America goes out of their way to provoke other countries to do things, and they have a range of uh, tactics that they use. Uh, America really does have their fingers and everything, you know, and they need to wash their hands because. You just can't put your fingers any old way, <laughs> you know. You gotta if you're gonna put your fingers any old way, you might want to wash them joints. Uh, you might want to wash them, and because we're in the COVID times, douse them with a little bit of that sanitizer solution. Just get a good squirt, squirt going on them hands, because uh, right now the hands are dirty as all hell. I'll get out. America's hands are dirty as hell. You know, just staying politically woke is taxing following the deeds and evil deeds and the notions and inclinations of white supremacists, white superiority complex people, and like the tip of the spear, Anglo-Saxon uh, world domination. Like America is an empire. I know they don't talk about it because we don't have a queen or a king, but it's an empire. Um, it's a global empire. We try to be a global empire. The I always say the royal we. I've been saying that for so many years, and I really mean to say the proverbial we. Uh, the royal we means me. The proverbial we means not me. So like, I, I understand the difference between these two, and I've always just been saying it wrong for so long. Uh, it kind of just stuck. Let me just slow down. They go in and they de destabilize other countries, and then they go take the natural resources. Uh, what used to happen was colonization, where people would go around, stick a flag in the ground and say, this land is our land now. Now that it's our land, we can do what with it what we choose. We can mine the ore, we can mine the, the gems, the gold, we can we can drill for oil, we can cut down all your trees and destabilize your rainforest, we can do this, that, and the other. America used to just go and plant the flag and then say, we're killing anyone in our territory. They literally, it's still done to this day with embassies. Most people don't know anything about politics. They know more about the bouncing ball in sports than they know about politics. But America today still does what I'm talking about. They did uh, hundreds of years ago with colonization. Today, they will go with a cup of soil. <clears throat> it's not a cup of soil. It's an exact weight and measurement per whatever size of facility they're going to build. But they will go with some American soil to another country and then say, 
we now declare this land where the soil is America. And this is our embassy. And you can't do anything. Like you can't rush our embassy. You can't you can't come near our embassy. We have the right to protect ourselves. You're on American soil now. This is this is our land. It's not your land. Not from Sea to Shining Sea. Uh, but with colonization, they used to go over, stick their flag, and say, this is ours, and to just steal from whoever they were uh, dealing with at the time, whoever they were colonizing at the time. Now what America does is we go over with surveyors for uh, corporations that have surveyors, and they go over and they survey the land. They have very expensive satellite technology. They will scan and do the soil deposits and core samples, etc. They will find out that you have gold or diamonds or emeralds or whatever, precious stone. And then they will send in the U.S. military. Now, normally, something really horrible has to happen for the military to get sent in. Not anymore. <clears throat> Corporations can talk to their congressman who they fund and they can tell the congressman uh, we need a military action to go down in this country let's just say Venezuela yeah so they will go speak with their congressperson the congressperson's on the payroll it's legalized bribery and then they will get orders drafted up to send in uh, the US military to go over there in a humanitarian effort. They'll, they'll word it up. They'll say something where it's not just we're going over there to steal their resources. They'll word it up so that they're going over there to help. Because all the governments around the world where brown people are in power are considered corrupt. They're considered unstable. They're not given the classification of a democracy. They call them failed states because there's brown people in power and there's natural resources. Most importantly, so they go over with the military <clears throat> in their tanks and their jets and the UAVs and their Predator drones and the Reaper drones. That's, I think that's the bigger one. Like the Predator's just a little spy thingy, but the Reaper's the one that drops the Hellfire missiles, cluster bomb munitions, uh, and they assassinate everyone who they need to. They go over with their weapons of mass destruction ironically, and they assassinate whoever they need to, and they uh, install people who are sympathetic to white ideology and the white cause. And after that's done, uh, the people in power usually simp for uh, American corporations or America, because you can just call America American Corp. Inc. Uh, you can just substitute, you can add that on there, and because uh, that's what it is. It's, it's America Inc. America Corp. So they sent for America and <clears throat> they draft up contracts where and the person who's in power, uh, who's already helped to overthrow their own government, will collect lots of money and stipends. And it'll be on a, a Swiss bank. It'll be untraceable so they won't look like they're just stealing from their own country. And... After they've mopped up the brown people who were in power, they will just steal. So, hundreds of years ago, we would, the proverbial we, would go over there, plant the flag, say this is our land, fuck you guys, we're killing you, steal all your resources, keep you in poverty, and now what we're doing is we're pretending to the Western societies, the Western societies are appeasing their own constituents, the population, by telling them we're going to a place because they're sick and they don't have drinkable water and, and there's disease and, it's, and we're, we're, we're bringing food and medicine. It's a humanitarian effort to help. We're, we're going over there to help. So this is good. And you should get behind us because we are helpers. We, we love helping brown folks. It's what we do. And I feel like at some point that's a dog whistle for the people who know, the white folks who know. Uh, this is, uh, people who don't follow politics, usually not a lot of brown people follow politics, but uh, we need to start because I, I'm starting to be able to hear that dog whistle. Um, so in Venezuela, 
uh, Nicolas Maduro is the rightful leader, uh, regardless of how I feel about him as a person or as a president, uh, he is the rightful leader. He won his election, right? and he's in power. Um, and what happened was America went over there literally two years ago with tanks and uh, guns and paramilitary troops and contractors, the contractors, the oil contractors, the uh, surveyors and uh, CEO, not the CEOs, they're not showing up until after the all the gun fighting's done. And so they're just trying to steal natural resources. So in the news recently, um, not recently, America actually put sanctions on Venezuela and then they recently tried to uh, destroy their economy. Sanctions really is just another way of starving the population, which will make them hungry and angry and want to f hurt somebody. And the only people they can get a hold of are the people that they see. The only people they can get a hold of are the people that are in their country. So uh, they're trying to have the people overthrow the government based off of implementing sanctions uh, that almost never work. Uh, because literally the people at the top have cash. They're not the ones who are hurting. So the sanctions is really meant to strangle hold the population and see what happens. It is such a clusterfuck the way that these things work. It's like, I don't know what happens, but let's see. It, it, this is the worst analogy. It's, it's like tossing... Some of those black cats, you know, the fireworks that uh, there might be 50 or 100 on a, on like a roll. It's like lighting that and tossing it into a crowded movie theater. You don't know what's going to happen, but you know something bad's going to happen. Like people might get trampled. You don't know if some fucking cowboy's got a gun. He hears that. He pulls out his gun, starts shooting. He doesn't know where it's coming from. He doesn't know what's going on. But it's just like, I don't know what this, I don't know what the outcome of this is going to be, but I have an idea of what I want to happen. Let's just hope for the best. Let's hope that the people kill this guy and take him out of power like they did Gaddafi. I'm going to have to make a separate video on Gaddafi because uh, he was a dictator who used chemical weapons. So says the West. And there's a lot of things the West says that you should take uh, with a grain of salt and look for proof and double, double, double fact check your sources. Like, cause if the sources you're getting are also Western leaning and the sources you're using are all a part of the Western media, like for instance, when Oh, jeez, I have so many things I want to talk about. When uh, when America left Afghanistan, they s used this f picture of guys running alongside an airplane trying to flee Afghanistan. And then if he, people didn't bother to research that, a lot of these people were running alongside the airplane because they were happy Americans were leaving their country. But the narrative you saw the narrative the news media gave to you was these people were trying to get out of the country. Some of them were, you know, the people whose lives were in danger because they were helping these American imperialist dogs who were trying to steal and strip their country from every natural resource and leave the people in poverty. And, and some of the people were trying to get out of the country. A lot of the people were. But the majority of those pictures that they showed you, they, they cut out audio and it's on the internet. If I can find it before I finish editing this, I'll probably add it in. The people were happy and cheering for these planes to leave. And then on the news media, they talked on, on most all of the American media. They talked about how uh, the forces trained by America were going to fight the Taliban and, and, and they could hold them back. And what happened when America's left, when white folk left brown country? The Taliban rolled in and they were blasting music and people were throwing roses and petals. Some people were getting shot. That is true. Like, I saw those uh, videos. But for the most part, the Taliban just rolled in without a single bullet fired. 
they were trying to round up the American people, the spies, for, for the record. If I'm in America and I'm helping Russians invade and circumvent America, that makes me a spy. The Taliban was trying to root out all of the American sympathizing spies. And that's what you don't hear from white media. Um, getting back to Venezuela for a second, because I feel like I'm going to go on for an hour if I don't. Um, Victor Guaido is the most West lean. Oh, he is considered self appointed president because he won a position in parliament. Uh, Venezuelans are very divided on this subject. It's kind of like America, um, the Republicans and the Democrats. Uh, so Nicolas Maduro is the actual president, but then Victor Guaido, I think his name is Victor Guaido. I'm, I'm pronouncing it wrong. Vector, Hector Guaido. Uh, he's the self-proclaimed new president. Coalition against the socialist dictator of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro. Maduro is an illegitimate ruler, a tyrant who brutalizes his people. But Maduro's grip on tyranny will be smashed and broken. Here this evening, it's a very brave man who carries with him the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of all Venezuelans. Joining us in the gallery is the true and legitimate president of Venezuela, Juan Guaido. <laughs> Mr. President, please take this message back to your family. Please take this message back that all Americans are united with the Venezuelan people in their righteous struggle for freedom. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And of course, he is backed and uh, I'm just gonna say, he is backed by most Western leaning uh, leaders like Biden and Germans, uh, Angela Merkel, and uh, the, the British Parliament uh, fucking guy who looks like Donald Trump, I can't remember his name, like most Western, air quote, Western leaning, Anglo-Saxon white folk are backing um, Victor Guaido. Um, and it's ironic, he kind of looks like, Guaido looks to me suspiciously like Pete Buttigieg's like darker cousin or something like he just looks like Pete Buttigieg like a little bit of spritz of like I don't know uh cinnamon on him or something like he, he like he put cinnamon in a water bottle uh and just sprayed it on him he looks like that prototypical stereotypical white college jock he talks and walks and acts like him. His mannerisms are that of uh, Pete Buttigieg. That being said, I'm not talking about you know gay people or straight people. I'm just like, this guy looks like the college guy from Harvard. And it turns out he was educated in the West. And uh, he's going to be like another pawn for the oil industries to come in and rake up money. And recently, in recent news, Biden actually... Uh, well, first off, Maduro, after being sanctioned and having his economy struggle, keep him out of the global economy and market and devaluing his currency and trying to destroy what he was struggling to try to build up, which is his country full of brown folk uh, at the hands of Western powers, Western, you know, white people. Um, so Maduro actually expressed he expressed his uh, solidarity with Putin, his decision to go to uh, Ukraine and do what he's doing over there. Now, after Maduro did this, like three weeks later, because now it's looking like it's, it's a bigger issue for the American power structure, for the Western white, for the Western Anglo-Saxon, you know, Caucasian power structure. Now you got leaders from brown countries, who are all in, in 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 accordance with each other? Who do not like how America's handling them? 
because they just go over and steal resources and f fuck everybody over, take everything without asking. And so they got a couple of different brown countries, leaders of brown countries are like, man, fuck America. And so, you know, uh, Nicolas Maduro expressed his understanding for what Putin was doing. He went on the world stage just to try to be like shock value relevant. And uh, a couple of days ago, Biden started doing secret talks. It's not secret. It's just not on any news. You can you have to Google. You have to search. You've got to read like a few different articles to find out what's going on. And Jin Pasaki's not talking about it. Van Jones isn't talking about it. No one's talking about what's going on, but Biden is actually, actually giving uh, like consensions to uh, Venezuela. He's talking about reopening up their market, un undevaluing their currency and allowing them to trade their own oil. Because at the end of the day, here's what's at stake. Here's what's at stake. This is a brown country full of brown people. Okay, they have a natural resource, oil, and they want to be the dictators of how that oil is distributed and sold and where it goes. They want to be the ones who are in control of their own fate and their own economy. And white power structure decided you're a brown country. You don't get to decide who you sell your oil to, how much the barrel prices go for. You don't get to, because we, we're, we're NATO. North Atlantic Trade Org, we control all the markets. We control the prices of everything. And if we let your brown, dirty, rogue oil get into our bubble, you could destabilize what we've been doing. You could undersell us. You could oversell us. You could topple the whole thing. We don't want that. We want our people to come in and take your shit. And then we'll teach you how to sell it. And we'll give you pennies. We'll give you salt-based sprinkles of your own money. So... <laughs> Uh, Maduro wasn't having it. He started buddying up to Putin on the world stage. And then Biden immediately was like, this isn't good. We might be facing this on several fronts. I'll talk about China in another video. But uh, Biden started giving consensions to concessions. I keep saying concessions. And he started giving concessions to uh, Maduro, Nicolas Maduro. And um, he started having negotiations and I kind of think it's fucked up because every brown country that's ever I'm not going to get into that so after he started making these secret talks Maduro uh, remarkably became quiet it's like it's like Trump making a woman sign a non-disclosure agreement before he pays her $280,000 to shut up and have a, an abortion, keep quiet about the mushroom dick. Uh, so that's what's going on in Venezuela. And uh, this is all ties into Ukraine and the fact that um, some people only care about their own people. A lot of people are that way. And some people have conditioned the world to think the opposite of that. So some people are conditioned to feel bad when bad things happen to, let's just say, white folks. So uh, in Ukraine, Ukrainians are dying. And I, as a black male, am supposed to feel bad. A black American male, I'm supposed to feel bad that... One world away, white folks are getting shot by other white folks. And I'm like, yo, bruh, here in America, the police are murdering black folks. And they're getting away with it. And that, that's just been going on for years, like hundreds of years. Uh, I'm not conditioned to feel bad, um... I mean, I am conditioned, but I guess I broke that conditioning when I was six. I didn't give a damn. Uh, when I was watching True Lies, I was I was rooting for the the Maori guy who they forced to play as an Arab. Guys from the Hawaiian Islands. He's he's not Arab. <laughs> I'm getting at that in another video. We got a got a Hawaiian guy forced to play an Arab because he's been typecast in Hollywood because nobody knows that, you know, different types of brown people exist. And you're close enough to the Middle East, right? I mean, Hawaii 
Middle East, same thing, right? These are the same type of people who said, uh, this is back when Trump was in the White House, same type of people who said, uh, there's three Mexicos. <laughs> When they were referring to uh, Mexico, Central America, and South America, they said there's three Mexicans. The Congress people said that. Like, I, I gotta get, gotta get that video and add it in this. Uh, so, I, I have been conditioned, or they tried to condition me. It failed. It broke the mold. I said no. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't care much for white tears. Um, uh, I don't care much for white cares. They they have everybody in the world talking about going to World War Three right now. Everybody's talking about World War Three because some because some white people are dying, and everyone's talking about uh, Putin's a war criminal. Well, not everybody. Uh, the president's not doing that. Actually, I think he just did it yesterday. I think that was the report. Or today, late, early, later in the afternoon today, I think they finally said that Putin's a war criminal uh, when he was asked a direct question in a press conference. Uh, I don't think the country with the dirtiest hands has the right to point dirty fingers at anybody. You should, might want to wash your hands first, uh, fix the problems you caused, and then sit back for like 450 years and then maybe you can start pointing fingers after you've been a good steward and a good country and a good a good populace it just doesn't seem like that's gonna happen so that's that i got another video coming up later